Hello, this is Gibran Sajek speaking, and we're going to do an exercise about qualitative data. The data set that we're going to use is these conformities, and you can find it on the link below. Let's imagine the following context. You are working at a manufacturing company, particularly in the quality control department. A sample of 500 items was obtained, and you are interested in analyzing the existing defects. Let's say that you want to do something with the defects that you will find, but there is some limited financial resources. Uh, they are available to solve those defects, but you'll need to assess where to allocate them. On this exercise, we're going to use the following tools. We're going to use a tally count, then a bar chart and a pie chart for the disconformities that you'll find. Then we're going to use a soft set worksheet and finally a Pareto analysis. So let's go to Minitab. I have already downloaded the data set, so I have it in my desktop. What I'm gonna do is to upload the data. So what I'm doing is clicking here in File. I'm gonna go to Open and I will locate where my data is. Here in Desktop, I have the Disconformities file. I'll select it, I press Open, and the only thing I need to check is that here I have the 500 items in a numeric uh, uh, type and then with a text the disconformities. Um, I have that my data has a column name, so uh, the only thing I do is to press OK, so I will import my data. Um, I'm just uploading a copy and here I have everything. As you can see, there are 500 elements. What you're gonna find is that some of them have uh, defects but some of them are okay, so the first thing that we want to do is to try to understand the data, what is happening. For the tally count, what I am going to do is go to the menu Stat. Remember that this is Minitab 18. And in Stat, what I am doing is going to the menu Tables and then doing a tally individual variables. This tally individual variables is helping me to count the amount of data that I have in this particular uh, analysis, I want to analyze the disconformities. So I can select these conformities and press select or just double click in these conformities. So I will have this variable on this part of my screen. What I want to do is to display the counts that is the absolute frequencies of how many disconformities I have of each type. And I want also to know what's happening with the percentages to see what is happening. When I press OK, my solution is going to appear here on the session window. And what I can see is that I have coating failure, incorrect packing, internal failure, product being OK, wrong color and wrong measures on these amounts. When looking at the percentages, something important to see is that the product OK is just 49% of my production hope. I hope that this is not a real company. Probably I want to check this a little bit more graphical, not just with the tally count, even this is telling me what is really happening with my production. To verify this, I'm going to check a bar chart and a pie chart. For graphing the bar chart, I go to the menu graph. Here in the menu graph, I press bar chart, and this is going to display me a different menu. I want to do a simple bar chart, it's just a unique variable, the one that I want to graph. So I select simple, I know that I am counting unique values that I have on my second column, so I just press OK. Here I know that my categorical variable, remember that this is a qualitative analysis, it's on the column of these conformities. I am going to double click in here so it appears on the right part of my window. And what I'm going to do is to include some elements here on this menu, so my graph is going to look fancy. For example, I can select here in labels and I can perform that the title is going to be, uh, let's say, disconformities. And maybe the footnote is going to be based on the analysis of a sample of 500 items. So it's gonna look fancy, it's gonna be something that I can deliver to my boss. I press OK. Uh, I don't want to change much, so I'm just going to press OK. And what I'm going to obtain is a quite interesting bar chart, where it's telling me what is the coating failure, the incorrect packing, the internal failure, the product OK, wrong color and wrong measures, 
particularly the same as what I had on my telecount, but now a little bit more graphical. If I look at this graph, something interesting is that most of my products are okay according to this graph. But this might be a little bit tricky, because if I take all the different disconformities, the amount of items that are wrong is even higher than the products that are okay. But this cannot be seen on this chart, because it is a little bit tricky. What can I do if I really want to see what is happening with the amount of products that are not okay? Look carefully how here I am taking into account the actual count of elements. In other words, how many items are being okay or how many items are wrong. What I'm going to do is now to graph a pie chart. This pie chart in here I'm going to again going to include, I'm selecting here in categorical variables, the count of unique values of these conformities. Uh, and what I'm going to do here in labels is uh, pretty much to do the same in title. I'm going to put a pie chart of these conformities uh, and footnote I can write pretty much the same based on a sample of 500 items. But moreover here in the slide labels what I'm going to do is um, to show the slide labels with the category name and the percentage. I don't want to see the frequency, I want to see the percentage. It's a relative uh, frequency. So I'm going to understand what is really happening with my production. I press OK, I press OK again. And when I do so, I'm going to have a completely different graph from this one that I have seen before. Remember that the bar chart can trick us saying that most of the products are okay. But here we can say, yeah, most of the products are okay, but it's less than half of it. The other half has troubles. Even we have different slices and we have different percentages of each of those uh, these conformities, we know that our factory is having troubles. So what we want to do now is try to assess if we have resources, limited resources, where are we going to allocate those resources? It is quite logical to say that we're going to assign them to wrong color that is the highest, probably then to incorrect packing that is the highest. But if we want to assess everything, how many defects are we going to be able to fix? If we want to focus on the defects, the first thing we need to do is to get rid of the products that are okay. We know that we have half of the production being okay. We don't want to analyze it anymore. We want to focus on these disconformities. So what we're going to do is now to split our data set. We're going to get a subset of the worksheet, including exclusively those elements that have a disconformity. How to do it? We're going to go to this menu that says data. And here you're going to see that there is an option called subset worksheet. When you press subset worksheet, this is going to tell us uh, or is going to send us to another window that says, how do you want to create a subset? I want rows that match a condition. This particular condition, uh, what I want to do is to exclude the rows that match the condition. Why? Because there is just the one that says product OK, the one that I do not want to take into account. So the column that I am uh, going to use as the filter is disconformities again. And the only thing I need to do is to say that I want to exclude the ones that equals being product OK. The new word name are going to be defects only. So I'm going to know that I am taking into account just the defects in my new analysis. I press OK and look carefully how a new page appears where it says defect only. And if I go down, I'm going to notice that I do not have the 500 items. Now I just have 255. That is half of the production that, is that, that, that has a defect. What I'm going to do is basically going to repeat the analysis. And if I have another pie chart, and here I want to compare them, if I press graph, pie chart again, and again I'm selecting these conformities, but look carefully how these conformities is now taken from the effects only, that is the, the, the worksheet that is, uh, that is available. Here on my labels, what I'm going to do 
is going to change my footnote. This is based on the facts found in the sample. When I press OK to this new pie chart, I want you to compare what is happening with both pie charts. This is the new one, the one that I have just created, and this one is the previous one. The first thing that I want you to notice is that now I have different percentages. It is not because the percentages of the first one are wrong, but because of the universe that I am considering is different. On the first one, it is based on a sample of 500 items. Hence, these probabilities or these percentages that I have in here are representative to these 500 items. Here it is just based on the defects. So these percentages, the 100%, correspond exclusively to the defects. I am changing the nature of the universe that I am analyzing, so I need to understand these percentages as frequencies or relative frequencies of a different collection of elements. Here the population is everything, or the sample is everything that I produced, and here my sample consists exclusively on defects. Now, what I want to do is to take into account where I can allocate my resources. In order to do that, I'm going to use a Pareto analysis. The Pareto analysis is also called 80-20, and what it means is that the 80% of the defects is, going to prob is going, probably going to be caused by the 20% of the causes. My analysis is located here in statistics. When I press uh, statistics, the Pareto analysis is a particular quality tool. And what you can see is that in stat quality tool, there is an item called Pareto chart. The Pareto chart is pretty much uh, a bar chart, but it is ordered from the most frequent to the least frequent. And it's gonna be comparing the cumulative relative frequencies of all the items. I click on this uh, on this tool, the Pareto chart, and what this is going to ask me is where are the defects or the attributes that I want to analyze? They are on these conformities. Remember that I am uh, selecting this new worksheet in which just these conformities are present. What I'm going to do is just to select the disconformities here on options, uh, I, I can press what are the uh, the labels on the x-axis and the y-axis, I'm not going to change it. Maybe on the title I'm going to do a uh, Pareto analysis. So it's going to look fancy again. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to press OK again on this window. And what I'm going to obtain is a completely new analysis. Let me make it larger to analyze it. This Pareto analysis, as you can see, is just considering what are the possible disconformities. Wrong color, incorrect packing, coating failure, internal failure, and wrong measures. They are ordered from highest to lowest, looking at the count, so I can verify what is the magnitude of how many disconformities I have in my production. But moreover, what I have on this line is the percentage, but this percent is being increasing. That is, it's a cumulative relative frequency in such a way that it starts at 40%, that is, the amount of wrong colors that I have, and it finishes at 100%, that, per, that, that means I am considering all the possible defects. When I am doing so, the first thing that I need to look at is, if I just fix the wrong color, I'm probably going to get rid of 40% of my defects. But if I try to fix wrong color and incorrect packing, I'm going to have the cumulative amount of 67% of all the failures. Moreover, if I approach these three failures, wrong color, incorrect packing, and coating failure, I'm going to be able to fix most of my defects, almost 90% of everything that is happening on my factory. So if you want to allocate those resources, this should be the order in which you can do it. And as far as you can go, the most defects that you will be able to get rid of. Thank you so much for looking at this analysis. Let's remember what we did. We were using the tally count, bar chart, pie chart, the tool subset worksheet, and finally the Pareto analysis to perform a simple analysis of 
what is the impact of different defects or disconformities in the production with a sample of 500 items. Thank you so much for listening. See you later.